Hello and welcome to another episode of The Foot Geeks. Today with me is Jillian from Hoka One One. So uh, what exactly does that stand for? Uh, loosely translates to freedom to fly, which is, uh, yeah, in Polynesian. Polynesian? Yes. There we go. If you're from Polynesia, you can uh, let us know whether or not that's true. But uh, <laughs> we're just we're just going by what we were told, right? That's uh, right. What's the history on Hoka shoes? Um, a couple of Frenchmen, uh, previously with Solomon, uh, big mountain trail runners themselves, uh -huh. uh, were looking to create a shoe uh, very suited to their running, but we felt it was um, an opportunity to for the run market at the time barefoot was really popular so they really appreciated the whole freedom of motion you have in the forefoot with with that approach but mm -hmm. they felt that uh they were missing cushion and that that type of shoe and that type of running wasn't necessarily sustainable especially for the kind of running that they were doing so they were looking at oversized rackets and shaped skis and big fat mountain bike tires and how those sort of enabled people to um, enjoy those sports more and take the impact um, out of those of those sports as they as they did it so yeah. that's the, the approach they took to developing these shoes well especially because when I first heard about them was mostly like a downhill running shoe that was what it was taunted as I think mm -hmm. right and mm -hmm. then and then now uh, for us I mean you have many other applications but uh, let me let, let's have a look at the different styles here maybe you can explain a little bit as to what all of these do and how they work sure sure mm -hmm. um, well, this is the Bondi 5. This one's been in the line the longest, and this yeah. would be sort of your, your, your signature Hoka, if you will. So if we're introducing someone to Hoka, we're talking about, uh, first of all, the midsole volume. So you can see that. And um, basically, if you think of shock, shock absorption on your feet, um, that's what we're going after there. So it takes the impact that running has on the body sort of out of the mix. So mm -hmm. um, whether you're struggling from, you know, knee pain or foot pain or whatever or you're increasing your miles or the days that you're running um you've got that shock absorption built in um you've also got a rockered outsole so that's um making your stride a little bit more efficient sort of a fulcrum effect and um mm -hmm. Uh, that works translates well um, for some medical conditions as well and um, so the Bondi is a great uh, starting point and um, uh, then we've got other shoes in the line this is the Clifton this is a little less volume um, um, but a nice light runner so a great great road shoe if you like the Clifton um, the Challenger is the sister shoe to that and that's got our ATR all-terrain uh, tread there if you like to do a little bit of trail um, and need a bit more traction awesome um, great Vancouver. Yeah, absolutely. We've got a new um, new shoe in the lineup as of this spring. These are all neutral shoes. This is uh, Hoka's first foray into dynamic stability. Kay. So it's not a posted shoe. It's still super light, um, but you've got this J-frame technology, which is just additional density that sort of just keeps you in that neutral zone. Um, and uh, that response to that has been fantastic so far. Um, we've also got a shoe called the Clayton. Yep. Um, with this dual density technology, it's also got a material called Armad in it, so it's got a little more responsiveness in the forefoot, but still has that cushion, cushion in the heel. So somebody um, going for more of that high performance road shoe. This has been a great ad uh, in the last year as well, and the full offering of uh, trail shoes that I didn't bring. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, there's a Hoka for everybody. Oh yeah, obviously there's lots of different colors available too. I think you know mm -hmm. some of these come in widths as well. That's just, right. Uh, just to keep that in mind. Yep. Uh, certain styles you can get in the wide fitting as well as the medium fitting, which is awesome for the wider foot that right. uh, wants to have that kind of cushioning. And the soles actually seem to really go a little bit wider as a result as well, right? Yeah, you've got great stability, um, great stability in in your hokas. Again, little subtle differences between each of the different styles, but yeah, um, yeah absolutely, you've got a nice wide platform there, so. Uh, a nice smooth ride. And is there a reason why they why they kind of left the rubber out in the middle? Is that so that if you're stepping on rocks, it doesn't tilt you um, laterally or immediately? It's actually as much? it's actually just in specific to the Clifton to um, just just keeping it as light as possible, just making sure oh, okay. you've got the rubber sort of in those you know durability zones and keeping the otherwise keeping the shoe as light as possible. Yeah, I think one of the things that we're wondering is uh, what kind of bird. Do we have flying in the in the O there? That's an right? excellent question. So if you, if you have the answer, please post it below. I really I'm really curious, and and Jillian unfortunately I think wasn't able to answer that today. <laughs> you hanging on that one, yeah. But uh, anyway, uh, if you have any questions regarding Hoka shoes, please uh, post them below, uh, or if there's anything else that you want to add, uh, do that as well. 
Have an excellent day.